Hi, this is Steve Rothstein from Rothstein Model Trains. Have a new video with some new toys we've gotten. Um, we're going to do an unboxing video today of two things we just picked up at the hobby shop. A set of Bethcon Call Cars from Cato. It's an eight pack of matched cars and they have a unique design we'll get into. A little bit unique. We are going to do an unboxing video of the new BNSF Broadway Limited Paragon 3 Sound. Uh, it's an SD70 ACE. This one you're gonna, I'm gonna program still. We haven't even programmed it. It will be quick programming because it is an exact match for two locomotives I already have, a UP version and a Kansas City Southern version of the SD70 ACE. So I can make it work real quick for us. So we're gonna do that. The last one we picked up a couple of weeks ago and I didn't do an unboxing video. I just was too interested in playing with it. It is a Broadway Limited um, NW2 switcher in Union Pacific colors. It's unusual because it's got the new Paragon 4 system in it for their decoder, which the big difference that I found in the documentation that comes with the box is it offers a better control of the lighting when you're doing it if you do it on a bigger engine. Uh, I don't see a difference on this one. Uh, it doesn't have the ditch lights that can blink and things like that. This is a real nice little engine. You can use it for switching operations, which is when they're building and tearing apart the trains ready to in the yard. I wanted it because it had a yard set up. I'm going to be doing a new layout soon that will have a switching area where we'll assemble the freight trains and all. I wanted to get some practice with it and do that. It's a little more realistic for me to do it with that and then do it uh, with the big full scale engine or full size engine they have that they use for over the road. As you can see, this is full throttle now. And it does move a little slower because it's a switcher not designed to go real far. They are designed to get lots of force early on, low throttle to start the train moving in the car and heavily loaded cars moving. Not designed to pull a whole lot of them. But I do like it. Works real well for us. And we're going to do some switching operations. I'll probably show you how we're going to do that after we get it all set up. So this is the way it comes. We haven't done anything with it yet. I haven't even programmed it or opened it or had it out of the box. It is Broadway Limited and it's their standard packaging. You see even foam on the inside of the paper cover and they wrap it in plastic. When you get it out of the box, you have styrofoam here that you have to remove that protects the rails. And my fingernail's not getting it this time. There we go. So I'll put that one there. That, did I just break that? No. Okay. Okay, so we got it programmed. What we're gonna do now is put it on our main track and test it out. Let's see how it works. I'm not expecting a whole lot of surprises from this because after all it is the same engine, just a different paint job. Makes it so 60 miles an hour to get to that point. I think I'm gonna have to change the speed programming on it. The bell and the horn work. And last thing to check is, does it still work in reverse and the backup light work?
Yep. One of the things Chris noted, and I should point out, these three are all the same engine for three different carriers. Broadway Limited put some road-specific differences in. For example, the sunshade here is full length. Over here, it's partial. Here, it's partial and painted differently. The radio antennas are different on each one. Um, so there are a couple of differences. I haven't noticed all of them, but that much we did note. The uh, sunshades and the antennas are different by brand or by road name. So Broadway Limited took their time and did a little bit of work on it to make it a little better, more accurate for us. Okay. Now our next stop, we happened to see these in the hobby shop while we were down there. It is a coal set, Beth Gone Coal Porters, eight cars. Cato just came out with it, or I haven't seen it before, but Cato had it and they had it in the shop. And these have a very unique feature in them that they are designed to work together as a unit. So, when you pull them out of the box, if they come out, yeah, that wasn't what I wanted, but it got it out far enough that I can get it. Okay. They come with the plastic cover, which is what helped me pull it out. And you see they're all here. They have different road numbers on each one which the real trains would have. You'd have them specific like that. They come with a dummy load in there. And I'm, I haven't tried it, and I'll do it in a little while. First, I want to try them. Uh, Cato says that you can remove that load by pushing down on one end, and the other end will pop up. Excuse me. But the real interesting part on these, see if you can get in there close enough to see, the couplers are a little different. They're not a full knuckle coupler like you would see on the other train. And that's because they're designed to work as a almost permanent coupling. And the box even tells us you have to drop it down onto each other to get them to couple. You can't do it by just sliding them together like a normal train would slide. And that's what we're gonna try and do now. First, I wanna see what does happen if you slide them together. Well, they did couple. That's good. But hopefully this design will keep them more secure when coupled. That's my goal for it. This one's not coupling. And I think he had it on the ramp and that's what was helping them. They were off level. So they're not gonna couple straight onto each other. On this ramp? That could be it, that there's enough of a ramp in this to make them drop down onto each other. And I can do it by rocking the cars a little bit. So there is a definite unique coupling point to them.
what this gives us is it's the first freight unit train we've got with all of it being the same thing and ready to go. Let me get that UP engine. And that's the problem, they're not coupling up. <laughs> so it does work, presents a nice image of the unit trains that you see going through full call. As it comes around this side, what we're going to see is a change lane of which track I've got to go through one of the gates. And that's to test if they'll pull through the, over the turnouts properly. And we do have a problem with it. <laughs> well, as you can see, we got it back working. We are going around the whole way, testing it. Looks like we had a problem with it on the turnout. Possibly it was hitting one of the other trains that was sitting too close, or it was bumping. You notice that the couplers tend to go up and down since they're mounted that way, mounted a little differently, and we may have to do something getting used to them to make it work a little better. I am going to put a little weight in each car, uh, make it weigh a little bit more closely to what it Playing your way, loaded. So, but that's what we've got. I do like having a full unit train like that. I'll probably end up with another set and make it 16 cars long. Um, and then one of these days we're going to get a set of the auto cars and a set of container cars. Uh, put the auto racks on that haul cars and the uh, container well cars that take the overseas containers and have unit trains of that. Let us know if you have any ideas on it or thoughts. Spring, spring, spring makes it flex. Mm -hmm. Well, while we were trying to figure it out, we played around a little, we found that the problem that was causing it to derail or uncouple appears to be the fact that they don't match up quite as well with the Broadway Limited coupler as they do with the Cato. This ATSF locomotive, an F7, is the Cato locomotive that we originally started with. It has the same type of rear coupler, or almost the same, as these cars do. It matches up and pulls them perfectly without a problem. So we've got five, six laps now couple of them before we turn the video back on. So I just want to emphasize if you go for this, try to remember that you need to match the couplers up, uh, either all Kato or all Microframe line couplers in the end scout. 